John chapter 12. And in verse 24, we read that the seed falls. That's about laying down. In his book, Slow Rise, the story of bread, Robert Penn tells how he tries to grow his own wheat. He talks of looking at the grain from his first harvest and realising he could mill it all into flour for that year. Or he could keep some back to sow for another year and in time his fields would produce enough wheat to feed a generation. We talk about laying down our lives for Christ. We speak of sowing the seeds of the kingdom. But what do we really think about what this means? As I get older and retirement approaches, I'm more than ever conscious of how I use my time. My mum used to say, only one life will soon be passed, only what's done for Jesus will last. Over the last two millennia, the way of church life in many places has settled into a comfortable pattern. Youth groups, lunch clubs, ladies meetings, etc. And the good folk who organise those groups have worked incredibly hard and given of their time and their energies. But let us be honest, much of the time we have been among the passengers who have enjoyed the ride, but not really engaged with those who don't yet share our faith. We've stayed in our comfort zone, the cheerful chit chat and the coffee and cakes afterwards. Jesus told us, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Dietrich Bonhoeffer said this, The cross is laid on every Christian. It is that dying of the old man which is the result of his encounter with Christ. As we embark on discipleship, we give our lives over to death. Thus it begins. The cross is not the terrible end to an otherwise God-fearing and happy life, but it meets us at the beginning of our communion with Christ. When Christ calls a man, he bids him come and die. All those meetings, the old patterns, have been swept away in this past year. God has given us this amazing challenge. We have a tabula rasa, a clean slate. How are we going to shape our Christian lives once social distancing is over, once we can meet up again? What things do we need to lay down in order to closer follow Jesus and better make him known. People are anxious about all the education which our children have missed. What are we Christians going to do to help the children learn more of God, to leave food, to nurture future generations? I've watched the increase in community spirit this year and the involvement of UCF friends in that. I'm thrilled that Natalie belongs to Ferndown Coronavirus Support Group and Lysantha takes our groceries to hope for food. Some people have been making face masks and PPE. Others in our fellowship are doing similar good things. And they're working with groups that aren't Christian groups, but groups full of people who want to do good in these sad days. Traditionally, the church has been known for offering social care. We have the experience and the tea urn and the folding tables. But let's get out there alongside folk, sharing what we can do. And it will be hard work, but it's what Jesus has called us to do. For four years, Bob did the PA for Ferndown Fate on the Field. I have to tell you now, I hated the week running up to that event. Both of us getting overtired and crabby with each other, lifting heavy loudspeakers and unwieldy microphone stands down from the loft, winding cables, working a 12 hour day, negotiating with some performance who expect, performers who expected to be treated like they were headlining Glastonbury and others who'd done little or no preparation themselves but expected perfect amplification. It was exhausting and backbreaking. But I think Bob was absolutely right. This was something we could and should do for our community. The conversations we had, the contacts we made, far outweighed the backache. 
seeds of the kingdom were being sown on those long hot Saturdays. Last summer I was talking to someone in Ferndown who suddenly said, I know you from Fate on the Field. So, first laying down and then in verse 32, Christ being exalted, that's about lifting up. If we are following him as we should, this should come automatically. As Matthew said, people will see your good works and glorify your Father. Sainsbury's had a slogan, our values make us different. I liked that. I even tried to get one of their staff t-shirts. And then I realised that faith isn't a sign to be worn, it's a way of life to be lived. We need to be the sort of people whose lives are different and people see that and ask us why. And we must have a simple answer ready for them. I know that God loves me, he's blessed me, I want to share his love and bless others. You don't need to be preachy. If they want to know more, they will ask and then God will give you the right words to answer the next questions. And finally, in verse 35, walk while you have the light. That's about using our time and our resources wisely. Preparing a 10 minute YouTube talk is much harder than doing a 23 minute sermon. I would love to share this morning all the things I've learned in the past 12 months. Things showing God's mighty hand at work in his world. Things will never be as they were before. None of us knows how long we will live or when Jesus will return. But I pray that we will all keep walking in the light of Christ through the grace of the Father and in the power of the Holy Spirit. As Jesus laid down his life for us, may we be willing to lay down our lives for him, to lift up his name before the world. May we be his instruments of peace and love. And may the darkness 